Wow, look at that crescent moon. Actually, I'm a full moon and I'm eclipsing the sun, a moon phase that represents a period of inner awareness. Gosh, that's really interesting. You would think so, but I'm having to tell you myself because Kippy forgot to mention it in the video. Get your hiking gear ready, we're climbing up the big mountain this week. The Eight of Cups is a card of leaving things behind and heading up to higher ground. That can be in a spiritual sense, like we're ascending to a higher mystical plane, populated by strange entities who are willing to guide us on a journey beyond the ego and into divine transcendence. Or it can mean you want to quit your job and take up professional basket weaving. Either way, it entails moving on from something established in your life and onto something new and more meaningful. Arthredded Weight describes it as a man of dejected aspect is deserting the cups of his felicity, enterprise, undertaking or previous concern. The eight cups he's walking away from represents something that he's achieved. That could be a successful project or something that he's worked hard for, but now he's decided that it's time to move on to something else. In many ways, this card can be seen as the precursor to the Hermit card back at number 9 in the Trumps. In that card, we can see the old man standing on the hill with his lantern and staff. It's seen as the archetype of spiritual enlightenment. In this card, we see the man abandoning his cups and heading up the mountain in search of something more. Now, when I made the video for the Hermit, I talked about how Waite said that the figure intimates where I am, you may also be. Well, this fella's obviously heard him, and now he's heading up there to check out the view for himself. This can be seen as the act of taking a risk and moving on to something new. Moving out of our comfort zones can give us a fresh perspective and a new lease on life. That's not to say that we're necessarily moving away from a negative situation. Rachel Pollock says in this card we see someone turning his back on a double row of standing cups, which symbolizes a situation that has not only provided happiness, but continues to do so. You have to remember that these cups are all standing upright, so it's not like the situation that we saw in the Five, where some of them have been knocked over to illustrate loss. In this case, it could be something that we've worked hard on and is doing well, but it's just not quite working for us anymore. The Thoth card is heavy on the dark colours and features cups that I think look a bit like ashtrays. Crowley says the lotuses droop for lack of sun and rain, and the soil is poison to them. Only two of the stems show blossoms at all. It has been described as the hangover that comes after the excesses of the Seven. Remember the slimy sewer from the last card? Well, now we've woken up with a banging headache and a dicky tummy, but at least we've got somewhere to put our cigarette. Crowley goes on to say, in the psychopathology of the path, this card is seen as the German measles of Christian mysticism. Okay, that's an interesting analogy. Can't see a spotty red rash. I might just put it down just in case. Flowery and Cuppy remains the theme on the Sforza and Marseille cards. The Solar Busker has two cherubs getting their Christmas decorations out of a purple box. Maybe on the next one we'll see them trying to untangle the fairy lights. Four and two mean word for word universal vegetation. I'm assuming that he's talking about four times two? I mean, that would be eight. Ooh, well done, Einstein. As for the vegetation, your guess is as good as mine. The hermetic title for the Eight of Cups is Lord of Abandoned Success. So Abandoned Success fits really well with the Wade Smith image. As we said before, the figure is walking away from the previous accomplishments to find something new. So I think that's about as obvious as it gets on Pixie's version. The other title of the card is Indolence. The dictionary definition of indolence is avoidance of activity or exertion, laziness. The Thoth card seems to go more in that direction. The two cards tie together in the sense that if you feel like you've achieved all you can in a given situation, you might become despondent with it and start doing the bare minimum. Lomala de Ket says Harris's interpretation of indolence is perfect, a stagnant pool drooping blossoms. The top three cups and the one at the bottom of the card are empty. The two in the center are spilling half their contents back into the sea. The Eight of Cups corresponds to the Pisces zodiac sign and to the planet Saturn. The fish have arrived! Yeah! But they've appeared with Saturn! Pisces is the mutable water sign and is associated with emotion, spirituality and sensitivity. The fact that it's a mutable sign means that it's associated with change, which fits well with the idea of the card. Saturn, on the other hand, represents discipline, responsibility and fixity, so this combination can lead to some tension. 
It relates to the Eight of Cups in the sense that the card depicts a spiritual journey of self-discovery. This can be characterized by a need to dissolve emotional limitations, fears or illusions, and that can take mental discipline. In order to dissolve our fears and limiting beliefs, we must first be willing to face them head on. Saturn in Pisces celebrities include Iron Man Robert Downey Jr., pop music starlet Ariana Grande, and King of the Moustache Burt Reynolds. The Thoth card sticks with the idea of indolence and relates to the negative side of this coupling. According to Lon Milo Duquette, this card has a bad attitude. Saturn is a heavy and hard-nosed downer, and this far down the tree of life, delicate Pisces doesn't have enough juice left to put up any kind of a fight. The Eight of Cups resides in the world of Briar and sits at the Eighth Sephira of Hod, on the Pillar of Severity. So Hod translates to glory or splendor, and it's the Sephira of intellect and reason, but when it's in the watery world of Briar, it takes on a very specific role. So what's the difference between these four biscuit worlds? A brief history of the four Kabbalistic worlds! In the tarot, we look at the Kabbalistic Tree of Life as four separate trees existing in four distinct worlds. The first is Absolute, the archetypal world. This is the fiery realm of divine emanation, and is thought of as the realm of unlimited will, desire, and potential. The ones of the tarot live here. Next is Briar, the realm of creation. This is the watery world where the archetypal ideas begin to coalesce into defined structures and ideas. Here is where we find the cups of the tarot. Next comes Yetzirah, the airy realm of formation. This is the world where the divine energy begins to take shape and form. The swords of the tarot live here. Finally, we come to Arsiar, the earthly world of action. Here is where the divine energy manifests into material reality. The pentacles of the tarot live here. The four worlds encompass the four elements that correspond to the four suits of the tarot. So now we know that Briar is the world of creation, and in that world, Hod symbolizes the intellectual and analytical aspects of creation. It plays a crucial role in the unfolding of the divine plan, as it moves from the abstract concepts at the top of the tree and to the concrete manifestations near the bottom. In many ways, it can be seen as a more tangible version of Hokmar back at the top. Israel Regardi says it will help the student not a little if he remembers that the sphere of Hod represents on a much lower plane similar qualities to those obtaining in Hokmar. The Eight of Cups herb is gravel root. Many gamblers carry this plant with them for good luck. Come on, Red! Come on, Red! Black 16! Ah, oh, bollocks! But what does it all mean? The Eight of Cups is a card about moving on. That can be in a spiritual, emotional or a practical sense. Wade says the card speaks for itself on the surface, but other readings are entirely antithetical, giving joy, mildness, timidity, honour, modesty. So on the surface, it comes down to what we were talking about earlier, moving on from a situation. That can be something that was emotionally fulfilling, but no longer serves our deeper needs or aspirations. In this sense, the card can tie in with the idea of true will, or finding our ultimate purpose. Wade goes on to say, in practice, it is usually found that the card shews the decline of a matter, or that a matter which has been thought to be important is really of slight consequence, either for good or evil. Now I've definitely been there, made a huge fuss about something that I later realised was utterly trivial. Realising that a situation that's been on our mind is maybe not that important after all. Also, have you ever decided to bite your lip and be the better person in an argument? They actually call that taking the moral high ground, which is pretty bang on when it comes to the image on the Wade Smith card. In a career sense, it's a pretty obvious metaphor for changing jobs. You might be doing something that's comfortable and paying well, but deep down you could be yearning for something that's maybe a bit more of a challenge, or you feel the need to help people. You could have put a lot of time and effort into setting up a business or getting a particular job, but now it's got to the point where all the enthusiasm has drained away and you're just doing it to make money and survive. Rachel Pollack says we see the figure climbing a hill, going to higher ground, with the implication of moving from a less to a more meaningful situation. In an emotional sense, the card represents ending a relationship that's not working for us anymore. Whether that's because the situation has become unpleasant, or you've just fallen out of love and you feel like it's time to move on. If you are reading for a young man, this card tells him that he will marry a young blonde lady. We're getting married, pure and simple. What, just like that? Yes, I'm pure and you're simple. If for a young lady, she can expect anything from her lucky star. Get your lottery tickets in. If you need something to do with your winnings, I could really do with a new camera. 
When the card appears upside down, it can mean a resistance to move on from a situation, although Wade throws another curveball for this one. He says reversed, great joy, happiness, feasting. I've got no idea where he's getting all that from, but I'll take it, especially the feasting. I do love a good feast. Getting back to the emotional aspect of the card, it can mean an unwillingness to move on from a relationship that's clearly run its course for whatever reason. Rachel Pollock says sometimes the upside down eight indicates the simple negation of the card's basic image. A refusal to leave some situation, a determination to hang on even when we know deep inside that we have taken all we can from it. Such a description characterizes many relationships. Now I'm sure we're all aware that an unhealthy relationship can create all kinds of anxiety, depression and just all round misery, but sometimes people can be reluctant to leave. There can be many reasons for this, for example it can come from a fear of being alone. In this case it's important to remember that some alone time can really help us to get to know ourselves and what we actually want from life. This brings us back to the Hermit card, which is all about taking some time away from the world to do some soul searching. Also this can be if a person feels worthless or that they don't deserve anything better. Now of course this is a lie that we tell ourselves when we're suffering with low self-esteem. Strength is a good card for this situation, having the mental fortitude to believe in ourselves and to know that we absolutely deserve to be happy. Another reason can be worrying about the other person, how are they going to manage on their own? Upsetting people is the last thing we want to do, but if you're staying with someone through pity, then that's no good for either of you. The Justice card is a good one here, as it's all about doing the right thing, no matter how difficult it may seem at the time. Now obviously none of this is to say that you shouldn't work at a relationship. I'm sure we're all aware that being with someone has all kinds of ups and downs. We're talking specifically about when you know in your heart that it's over and it's time to take that lonely walk up the hill to find something more meaningful. Steve Maraboli once said, letting go means to come to the realization that some people are a part of your history, but not a part of your destiny. When this tarot is presented in the reverse, it indicates satisfaction in all things. Oh, that's nice. When does that happen then? The big takeaway for the Eight of Cups is the concepts of moving onwards and upwards in all aspects of our lives. Sometimes that can be painful and it might take a great deal of courage, but if we're going to discover our true will, then it really is the only way. Benjamin Franklin once said, without continual growth and progress, such words as improvement, achievement and success have no meaning. Here we are again, at the end of even more mystical tosh. May the coming days bring you meaning, and we hope you'll climb the mountain to the like and subscribe buttons. Until next time.